The result of the vote on the third round of voting is as follows. 128 votes cast. Murdo Fraser, 31. Joanne Lamont, 26. Ken McIntosh, 71. Accordingly, as Ken McIntosh has received more votes than the total number of votes received by the other candidates, and as more than 25% of members have voted, Ken McIntosh is elected as presiding officer of the Scottish Parliament. I take this opportunity to thank the other candidates who put themselves forward, Murdo Fraser, Jan Lamont, John Scott and Elaine Smith, and I'm sure you wish to join with me. I've known Ken McIntosh as a colleague and a friend since 1999, and I wish you well in what is the best job in Scotland. And now, can I present your new presiding officer? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all my fellow MSPs. I'm very, very grateful indeed for the, the honour and the privilege that you have granted me to be your next presiding officer. And I want to thank also my fellow candidates. Uh, before I go any further, can I actually pay a particular tribute to my predecessor uh, as presiding officer, to Tricia Marwick, who I think will be going up to join her family in the gallery. Um, I imagine that Tricia will be full of many and mixed emotions today. But can I suggest to her that she finds room for at least a small feeling of pride, uh, pride that she has served her constituency, her region and her country with distinction over 17 years, and pride too that she had the courage as presiding officer to begin the process of parliamentary reform, a process I would be honoured to follow in her footsteps. And proud, I think, that she has left the parliament more mature, more established and more confident than ever before, ready for our new powers, ready for the new challenges that undoubtedly uh, lie ahead. And as, as Tricia and many of our former colleagues step down, it gives me great pleasure to welcome and thank all of you, the class of 2016. I, uh, I can see around me many familiar faces and friends, and I welcome you back. But I see too a huge number of new members freshly elected. And can I just say on a personal level, it's a record number, on a personal level, the energy, the infectious enthusiasm and the optimism with which you have filled this building already in the few days you have been here has invigorated me. It has refreshed this place and reminded us all of the opportunity the Scottish Parliament offers all of us to make a better Scotland. And as we look ahead over the next five years, I hope we can uh, work together. Uh, I do, however, wish to apologise now. With a record number of new faces, I am sure I'm going to make some mistakes in the next few days. I will bound to misidentify you. I'll probably actually relocate your region or your constituency to another part of Scotland. In the last few days, I have warmly congratulated on their election to this parliament two members of our catering staff, a BBC journalist and a special branch officer working for Prince Charles last night. <laughs> but the revitalising of this parliament reminds me of the promise, the promise offered by devolution, which is to work together across the party divide for the common good. I imagine that all of you and all your families 
are filled with pride that you serve as MSPs in the Scottish Parliament. I know mine does. And I know my, my late father would have enjoyed this moment. Uh, my father was never elected, uh, never stood for office actually. He was a head teacher. But he was asked to be a candidate uh, three times on three different occasions. Now the most revealing aspect about my father is that he was asked by three different political parties. I, for the first time perhaps in my life, I hope I've inherited that quality from him. I'm very conscious that each one of us, each one of you, has a tremendous responsibility and a duty to the people of Scotland. I see it as my responsibility and my duty to help you in that task. Thank you very much.